the reality is that one sees a tremendous amount of shows that leave one fairly cold, but the aggregate tends to be comforting, just, just knowing that the sheer quantity of material is being produced. It's intimidating as well, uh, and it could be demoralizing to think that so much is being produced and so little of it seems like it's going to last for the ages. But it seems to me there's a great deal of highly intelligent, highly considered work happening all the time, and it's a fairly amazing privilege to be in a metropolis where such a quantity of material gathers and is so professionally presented and put on display. I think as I'm not, I'm not a practicing painter or an artist of any sort, people might want to know why I am an art critic at all and why not say a movie critic or a music critic. Uh, and those are art forms that in my personal life I enjoy uh, about as much as I do art. And it's a question I ask myself and I'm not entirely really sure of the answer. Um, but for one reason or another I fell into a study of art history. That's the subject I chose um, from a very early age as it happens. As a critic who was emerging in London in, the, in my 20s, which would have been in the 1980s, um, there were really a great number of very fine writers to, to look up to, uh, particularly among uh, the older generation of people who wrote uh, sporadically, such as the painter Patrick Heron and the veteran critic and curator David Sylvester. Um, and those people, I think, are people I looked at pretty closely and admired their style. I was also lucky to have a personal relationship with the late Peter Fuller, who was the founder of Modern Painters magazine, and a very quirky, individualistic, uh, maverick, conservative voice among the critics. Uh, I think it would be fair to say I was a little bit of an acolyte at a certain point. I would not class myself as a conservative writer today, although plenty of people have told me that's how they would class me. But um, I, I think my tastes are heterodox and I'm essentially a modernist. How I became an art critic was also kind of by accident. I was sure that I wanted to be a writer, but I entertained fantasies of being a novelist or a poet or a uh, screenplay writer or something like that. But at the same time, I had been studying art history and kept wanting to study more art history. And the literary ambition plus the curiosity about art kind of dovetailed. When I started some postgraduate research, I also started my career as a journalist and found that the short form, the paycheck, and the mass audience always won out over the more substantial, scholarly, slow-paced, academic deadline, and alas, my uh, academic career gave way to my journalistic one. What's really great about New York for me is that it's both uh, sort of the capital of the world and there's an amazing array of nations represented in what's avail available to be seen at any time. And at the same time, it really is a local it's almost like a village uh, in that uh, there are opportunities for people you know who are working here, living here, born here, or, or have come here uh, to, to show their work and to be involved in a scene and, and to, to, be, uh, to be involved in group shows and cooperative endeavors, that kind of thing. You can have a fairly global view of the art world from one city. If you, be, if you choose a big enough city, because if it's London or New York, to a lesser extent perhaps Berlin or Los Angeles, the world comes to you at some point or another. But what, what comes to you from quote unquote the world tends to be the major international players. If you're really immersed in the culture of a city, you, you get to realize that art isn't just made by superstars, that an art world is a very complex, multi-layered organism in which the cream that rises to the top only does so because of the kind of organic activity underneath. 
and that uh, what's on the top isn't going to stay at the top anyway. It's a constant uh, up and down, back and forth. I love the fact that there's this shameless mix of, uh, you know, superstars in museums, uh, struggling bohemians in kind of very raw spaces and group shows, and it's, it's one great big soup, and you, you, can, you can see it all. I'd love to say that I fall upon things and discover things by chance, and occasionally I do, but the realities of newspaper journalism are such that writing for a paper like the New York Sun, where I'm also a contributing editor, so I have a hand in assigning works to my colleagues, but working on a paper which has four or five critics you can't just leave it to chance and see what you like the look of. What I'm looking at and what's hot and are not always the same thing. Um, I think I have good taste in that I have uh, a well-developed and well-rounded taste. But I'm probably the, I'm the first to acknowledge that I'm probably not the best person to ask what's the hottest, newest thing. Because um, although I see a lot of young and emerging artists, the Lower East Side, going to art schools, um, hanging around with some young people. Um, I, don't, I don't really care what's the newest, hippest thing. That's the first point. The second point is, even when I was in my 20s, I had a kind of middle-aged taste, in, by which I mean I like art that's mature. Uh, not that it's middle of the road and boring by any means. I, 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 don't, I think that um, art is a slow process. Um, and that painters in particular, artists in general, but painters or people working in a traditional medium like sculpture in particular, um, are going to mature much later than um, somebody perhaps who's, who's working with new mediums that don't have such traction and such a history. And I try hard not to just write about what I know I'm going to love. Uh, I don't, I'm not looking for trouble, but I feel it's my challenge and my responsibility, having a weekly column on a paper, to build up a, a comprehensive overview, uh, or at least a cross-section of the visual culture. So for what I want to do, therefore, is, is, is cover different mediums, different generations, uh, some emerging artists, some foreign artists who are not known in this country, so on and so forth to get a kind of nice balanced diet for me and for my reader. I don't think critics today have a kind of influence that they had in the past. I think it's necessary and useful for people who are building the reputation of an artist that the artist is going to have a few lines uh, or as many lines as possible on their resume devoted to critical response. I don't think they really care whether the response is good, bad, or indifferent, indifferent as long as they spell the artist's name right and there's a reproduction and several column inches. Um, I don't know, I don't think somehow that uh, the, the new crop of collectors uh, do much research into uh, critical response, but I suspect they do some. Um, but they don't necessarily think, I think, that a bad review is a disincentive to buy. I think they definitely think that a bad review is better than no review. I don't know, it may be a sign that, that I'm growing wiser or just jaded, but I, I used to like to get indignant about the whole idea of an institutionalized avant-garde, the whole idea of uh, uh, a multi-million dollar stacked white cube that's perpetuating the idea that whatever it shows is somehow quote-unquote cutting edge. Um, whereas now I tend to just say, okay, these are some people, they have their taste, uh, and this is some art to look at, and some of it's interesting and some of it's not. Uh, which may sound a little uh, collaborationist, or that one has given up the, 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 the good fight, as it were, but I tend to be much more laissez-faire these days than I was in my slightly angry and indignant youth. Hello, how are you? Yeah, you okay? Fancy a treat? Fancy a treat, baby? A nice treat?